Okay, thank you. Thanks, Drew. And thank, again, thanks, everybody, for coming. And again, a thank you to Dennis for putting this together. Uh, an amazing day. So I'm very briefly going to introduce one of our centres of excellence, the Experimental Arthritis Treatment Centre, which Steve has already mentioned. Um, and again, as Steve has mentioned, there are six of these centres, uh, actually seven of these centres, focused on rheumatoid scattered around the UK. So, so here's Newcastle, one up in Glasgow, one in Birmingham, Oxford, Cardiff and a couple in London. And they were awarded, I think we started working about two years ago, and they're for a very specific type of research which we call experimental medicine. Um, and what's experimental medicine? It's actually quite hard to define experimental medicine. When I was putting this talk together, I actually went on the web and looked for some uh, definitions, and, and they vary. But I think the fundamental definition is understanding more about human diseases. But in the context of our centre, we do that by testing new treatments and identifying new biomarkers. And it's all about novelty. So many of you will have been involved in clinical trials, which we call phase three trials, where the drug's been through many stages, and we think it's probably working, and, and they're quite nice trials to be involved with. You get a drug which has had a bit of a track record. I'm talking very much about the other end of the spectrum, just starting out, and I'll give you an example in a minute of treatments that we hope will be beneficial, but they're very different types of trials, and, and to me that's, that's the... the kind of critical thing about experimental medicine and our experimental arthritis treatment centre. It's what, as an academic, really excites me. It's understanding a new treatment and understanding why it works in a disease. The important thing from the patient's perspective is it's usually accompanied by quite a lot of tests because if you're trying to understand whether a treatment works, you're not only going to need to measure whether the patient's getting better, but blood tests, doing some imaging x-rays or MRI scans, maybe even joint biopsies to really understand what that drug's doing. <coughs> and, and this is early phase research. And in parallel with that, looking for new biomarkers. And a biomarker can be a blood test, it can be an x-ray, something which tells you about the disease, whether a treatment's working, whether somebody has a disease, whether their disease has actually gone away or not. So a very broad term biomarkers, but again that comes into our experimental arthritis treatment centre. So effectively we've got two streams of work. One is looking at new treatments and the other one is trying to identify new biomarkers which might help us to use treatments better. Um, I've just listed three examples of new treatments here that we're testing. So this one you're going to hear about this afternoon from Catherine Hilkin. So I've actually taken out my slide on this. This is a treatment that we've developed in Newcastle over the last 10 years but in view, in just really because of time, I thought I'd miss that one for Kat this afternoon. I'm going to talk to you about this one, which we call repurposing. Repurposing is when you take a drug that's already being used in one disease and switch it to another disease. So you might spot something in the way that drug works and think, well, that might work in, in rheumatoid or that might work in osteo, let's, so let's give it a go. But you have to kind of start at the beginning again. It's quick. It's quicker because the drug's already been through the animal testing and things like that. So you haven't got to go right back to the beginning. But in terms of the disease, it still takes a bit of time. Um, and Fry's not here today, but we don't, I just put this in because we don't just focus on arthritis. As, you, as you'll know, musculoskeletal disease is a very broad spectrum. Um, some very complicated diseases like Sjogren's syndrome and Fai Ng, who is not here this morning, is really the, the, one of the European leaders in this condition. And again, going back to what Drew said, we, we lead the UK cohort on Sjogren's syndrome. So we've got a big collection of patients, big collection of samples, and Drew's been trying this drug in this condition where there are very few treatments. And he's been a real pioneer um, in, in this area. Um, so just as an example, this is a complex slide. This is the repurposing study. So I'm an immunologist by training in terms of my scientific training, and all these red and green and blue circles are immune cells that we find in a joint of somebody with rheumatoid arthritis. But there's another cell called the fibroblast, which really, until very recently, has been thought of as a, as a scaffold cell. All the tissues in your body have fibroblasts. They kind of form the scaffold which everything else sits upon. And so they've been thought of as a very benign cell that doesn't do very much. It's important for structure, a bit like your skeleton is important to hold your body together. The fibroblasts were thought to be important to hold the tissue together. But we now recognise these cells are quite important in diseases like rheumatoid and actually kind of form the home for all these other cells to come into. And there's a, a big uh, body of evidence now suggesting that 
these cells are pretty central to rheumatoid arthritis. Although they're not part of the immune system as we see it, they do seem to, if, if you like, keep the immune system going. And we don't target these cells. And one thing that we've known for many years is that all these good new treatments, the anti-TNFs, rituximab, tocilizumab, you may have received some of them, they work very well. They're certainly in advance, but some, in a lot of patients, they don't kind of finally get them into remission. There's always a little bit of disease left. And our idea is that maybe that's because we're not treating these cells. So we can treat all of these cells and neutralize them. But if these ones are left behind, then the cells just come back and start all over again. So we're only half doing the job. So this new trial, which we call TRAFFIC, and I won't go into what this stands for, but the F is for fibroblast, and the RA, as you probably realize, is for rheumatoid, so we're halfway there, is, is to find a drug <coughs> which we've repurposed from cancer, which stops these cells from dividing. And it's quite useful because that cancer drug has been in a few trials already. It seems pretty safe in terms of cancer drugs. It doesn't suppress the bone marrow. And so we've joined up with a biotech company from Scotland to, to test this drug in rheumatoid. And we're just starting. We hope to recruit the first patient in October of this year. Um, the other reason I mention it, I think I'll come on to it in a minute, is that this study is funded by the Medical Research Council, but it's a really good example of where Arthritis Research UK have given us the infrastructure to then go to other funding sources to, 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 to start a trial. And i just show this slide because this is experimental medicine. So patients that get involved in this study, we're going to want to take some joint tissue once they've been on the drug, They'll be having some MRI imaging. They may have a, a, what we call a PET scan. The patients will be kept busy. So this isn't, as I said, this isn't your phase three study. This is an early phase study. And we're only going to be recruiting about 20 patients. And you can't always be sure whether the patients are getting better. Some will, some won't. But by doing all these tests on top, we get a much better feel for whether the drug's working. So, you know, by looking in the joint itself and looking at the cells, we will get a feel as to whether we're stopping those fibroblasts from doing the bad things. So that's, that's a good example of an experimental medicine study. ARUK have provided the infrastructure and MRC have uh, provided the funding. And again, interestingly, we've got three, two other centres, two other experimental arthritis treatment centres who are partners on this grant in Glasgow and in Birmingham. So, so it's a nice network. Biomarkers, I'm not going to go into this in any detail, I've already mentioned it. They help us to diagnose conditions faster, hopefully to select the best treatment for the individual patient. And we're terrible at this at the moment. This is where we have to go in the next 10 years to, 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 for all sorts of reasons. Some patients are doing really well on treatment and we think we can probably take their therapy away, but some patients then flare, some don't. So a biomarker might help us to understand when it's safe to stop a treatment, which is just as important as when it's safe to start it. So, so Ken, who's over there, might be, will be happy to talk to you about his project later on. He's sitting there. There he is. So Ken's got a study specifically around this. And I've mentioned blood tests, biopsies, imaging. Um, and again, FI has got a lot of work going on in Sjogren's syndrome funded by the MRC in terms of understanding fatigue biomarkers and which patients might go on and get complications. Finally, and to me this is the most exciting part of well, not the most exciting, very important and exciting part of the programme. Where's Helen? Wave your Helen here in the purple is leading our engagement programme. So when Arthritis Research UK funded these grants, they said we want there to be a step change. You're, you're already doing this work. So how can our funding put you up to another level? And when we thought about it, the thing that often um, inhibits progress is, is simply getting patients involved with studies. We have lots of patients, most of them are very keen to get involved, um, but particularly in this early type of research, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult because I've mentioned biopsies, lots of imaging, a lot of time. And so we, we thought we'd develop an engagement program to help people, not only patients, but their relatives, and even our NHS colleagues who are not academic, who, who don't do these trials, to really understand what experimental medicine is all about, why it's valuable to participate. And there's no doubt that patients that go in for these sorts of studies, although they're very early stage, perhaps because they get more attention and they learn more about their disease, they actually do pretty well. Even if the drug isn't necessarily the next blockbuster, we find the patients come out of it at the other end doing quite well. And that might simply reflect that their understanding of the disease improves, they're getting quite a lot of care and attention. And so I think it's important to understand that and so Helen's leading an engagement program which is going to produce information 
hopefully involve the press because I think that this is not just for patients, it's for the general public to really understand what this sort of research is all about because it's where new drugs and new biomarkers start off. And these are a couple of quotes that we put into our grant actually. So our, our aim is to develop an ethos within the Experimental Arthritis Treatment Centre that engages, excites and motivates our patients and colleagues to join us in our pathways to discovery. So we want everybody that comes into our centre to feel really excited that, that they can be a part of this. And the, the other thing we've said is our ideal is for patients to arrive for their first appointments with an expectation of research involvement if this is what they want to do. And the breadth of what we do will ensure that there will be many opportunities. So it may be a blood test, it may be a questionnaire, it may be one of these invasive studies, but there's certainly something for everybody that wants to be involved. And the reason I want this to go out to the public, because I want it's really the first visit that's really important. You need to come almost expecting to be involved. Because when you get there, your first visit, you're pretty busy and, you, and obviously you're a bit anxious. So I'd like the public to understand this and, and where it's all going. So just to summarise, our Experimental Arthritis Treatment Centre provides us with the infrastructure to perform the sort of cutting-edge research that I've briefly described, involving our patients as partners, largely around new treatments and novel biomarkers, and then we have this engagement programme which Helen is running, to which helps people to understand what we're all about and to forge this true partnership with patients, <coughs> families, colleagues and the public. So I think that's all I had to say, so thank you very much.